Hey. Hey. Good afternoon. Lab good afternoon. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good evening. I'm thrilled and uh, honored to be able to have a chat with uh, with you, Nick, co-founder of Lab Code Agents. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen you live, probably a year or so ago at LCA Live in San Diego. Great oh, to catch up. A long time, dude. A long time. So I'm glad. I'm happy to be here for my very first 10 minute lab. Has the clock started? I'm, st I'm going to start the clock right now and I'll keep a, I'll keep an eye on that. <laughs> Stop um, the clock. We don't want to go over 10 minutes because that would be insanely crazy. I'm almost crazy. nervous that I took the job of, of watching the clock because an hour and a half from now, we'll go ahead and end the show. I'm so nervous. So, so, so tell me a little bit about, uh, what's been happening since I've seen you and maybe, maybe we'll start with, uh, since the world changed as it relates to COVID, I'm curious to see, uh, how that's affected you and, and, and your business, your mindset and anything that you've done to adapt. And, uh, but before you answer that, I, I should have, um, get, give us a little bit more of a, of an introduction of what you've been up to lately too, because sure. I saw your, an updated bio and it was uh, a couple things that I, I didn't know about. Yeah. I do have an updated bio. So, um, well, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Nick Baldwin. I'm one of I'm the co-founder of Lab Code Agents, uh, and uh, been running this thing with Tristan Almada for about six years. Um, I've run uh, several mega teams, uh, one in New Jersey, one in Michigan. Uh, I'm from New Jersey originally. I live in Michigan now. I was a market center team leader for a KW for just shy of two years here in Michigan. Um, and then I was regional technology trainer for the Michigan and Northern Ohio region of Keller Williams. Um, I recently, that was just about a year. I recently decided to resign from that position, um, to pursue other opportunities. Right. And so, um, this, uh, lockdown or pandemic has been really interesting because, um, you know, I've, I feel like I've, I feel like I've actually gotten quite a lot done. Um, I feel like I have really been able to focus, uh, very heavily on, you know, what I want to do, where I want to go. Um, I've been able to get very purposeful with, you know, the direction I want my, uh, my life to go on. I think, you know, the pandemic has been very hard for people. So, uh, I don't want to say I'm enjoying it because I'm not enjoying it, right? But Let it's me ask weird. You a question about what? So, what caused some of that, um, some of that uh, accomplishment and being able to stay more focused? And I, I was thinking about as you were talking, did something get taken away? Like I was talking to someone recently who was, who built a lot of their business on open houses, and then they became sort of oh, okay. off the table for a second. And and or I've talked to people that used to travel a lot to where they went to their place of business and were on the road a lot. Now that's cut down. So they've gotten a lot more time back. Therefore, they had a choice. They could hang around and fool around or they could be more productive. So which one of those, if any, sound um, a little bit more like or or if not, how did you? Become yeah, that's interesting. So so. That's a good question. So I actually am not in production right now as a realtor. I I did have two teams in 2019, um, like I said, running simultaneously in New Jersey and in Michigan. But when I took the regional technology trainer position for Keller Williams, I decided to uh, dissolve my team. So I haven't been in production for a year. However, um, I'm transitioning uh, more towards consulting and training agents on technology it uh, doesn't mean I'm not going to start another team at some point down the line, but I know where my um, skills lie. And so for me, in terms of real estate, nothing was really taken away. However, I have, I for me, there was something that was given to me during the pandemic. Oh, cool. And uh, Dave, you know, you, you're a KW Market Center owner. And so, you know, a lot of times if you're talking to agents or you're in a recruiting appointment or you're consulting with a large team, you know, you have to drive around to different things and, and it takes longer for things to get done. So from a real estate standpoint, um, if you're an agent, you know, let's say you have like three or four listing appointments in a day, right? Mm -hmm. The reason why you probably can't schedule more is because you got to account for how long it takes you to get there. So for me, 
I was able to get so much more done because I'll just do back to back to back to back Zoom. So I'm able to talk to, you know, five, eight, 10 agents a day, consult them on their business. Um, and so for me, that was something that was, that was given to me. I felt like that was a blessing in disguise. And I think a lot of us thought, a lot of us have now figured out, okay, this could really be the new way of getting things done. So like, you know, as an agent, scheduling buyer consults or scheduling listing consults, doing it via Zoom um, during a pandemic, I think could be a lot more efficient, right? You could, so agents are having their best year ever. And I feel that's in part to the fact that lead generation, like this, let's say a lead comes in, right? Hey, how's it going? Um, oh, I'm looking to buy a house. I'm, I'm really motivated. Okay, great. Hey, let me shoot you over a Zoom link so we can jump on and chat for a few minutes. That was something that we could have done before, but it would have been weird, right? Yeah, but right. Now, it's something that like is the norm. It's the norm now. So people kind of expect that. So I think it's given us a lot more leverage to get things done in a quicker time. Yeah, and I like that. I like that mindset. That's a, that's an opportunity. So that's totally. a great, great way to think about it. And 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 I agree with you. And what one other thing that I've noticed as we're building this title company, and and I think some of these folks that we might be trying to recruit that are title sales reps that are super busy, top of the pyramid type people, they're also busy staying focused, as you just mentioned, um, and condense some of their driving. But at the same time, we're humans, and and. Some people want a safe channel to go out and talk to someone that they recognize or know. And so having those appointments, I've, I've noticed an ease of doing so. So yeah, hundred percent. And you know, you doing home tours through zoom or through, through Facebook messenger, you know, and, and, and as we, as we progress, right. Like we figure out what's safe and what's not right. So, you know, we get back to doing in-person things as long as we take precautions. But I think like it's definitely allowed us to, uh, streamline and get and be more efficient and, and more productive. Um, so yeah, definitely. It's going to be something that we work into our business as things go back to normal anyway, you know? Very true. Now we also yeah. talked a little bit about through text message about mental health in the state yeah. and, and, and because of pan, the pandemic and the fact that you're, you're open about some challenges you've faced. I think it's super important for people that, uh, you know, the old saying don't measure, someone's outside versus your insides and very difficult to know what other people's insides are feeling or thinking based on sure. seeing them and, and, and with all the success that you've had, what are some of the mental challenges that you faced? Because I'm sure I'm in that same situation or have been. And so I'd right. love some perspective. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So I, those of you who follow me, I'm really open about my mental health. Like, you know, I, I live with depression, anxiety, ADHD, <clears throat> Uh, my son is eight years old. He has Tourette syndrome. Um, and so for me being like, okay, let, Tristan and I built this large community. We're very visual people. We're very vocal people. Um, we have been successful, you know, many different roles have successful teams. And so people say, oh, you know, I wish I was, I wish I had a life like Nick and Tristan. I wish I wish I had it all together. <laughs> and the funny thing is like, it is, that could be furthest from the truth, right? Like that could be furthest from the truth. Um, Tristan has his own set of problems. Tristan is an idea person. He's not an implementer. So he needs to surround himself with people who can implement. I'm similar to that. I'm an idea person. I'm terrible at implementing. So the two of us get together. We come up with ideas. We can't implement for, you know what? So, <laughs> So I just want everyone to know that, right? We have people on our teams that help us implement. But in terms of mental health, I'm very vocal and open about what I go through. Um, you just I gave have a good idea, by the way. Next time I talk to Tristan, I, now I'm realizing we're both the same. We're all three the same. I need an extra person on the phone call to keep an idea. Yeah. Track all I these mean, that's things. kind of, right. That, exactly. Uh, so for me, mental health, you know, diagnosed depression, anxiety, ADHD, um, it, it's, it's, a struggle, right? Like it's a struggle. It's been taking, it's taken me a long time, uh, to kind of figure out what works and what doesn't. Um, you know, I'm on, I'm on four different antidepressants that works for me, right? I'm, I'm a big advocate of, of, of pill of happiness in a pill, big advocate of that, but that doesn't, 
that is not a cure all, right? Like people say to me, Oh, Nick, you know, why don't you just do yoga or meditate or journal? And I'm like, yeah, like, okay, cool. But like, I do those things, but there's a big difference between depression and being depressed, anxiety and having anxiety and being scatterbrained and having ADHD. Those are two very different things. Depression means you're sad for no reason at all. Anxiety means you feel like uh, you're going to have a panic attack, but nothing's wrong. Um, if you're depressed because your goldfish died or you're anxious because you have a big listing appointment, though it's very different. So yes, while, and, and during the pandemic, I took the opportunity to get in Dave Cullen shape where I got, you know, I built my home gym. I got, I lost 15, 20 pounds. I got, I started exercising again. Yes. Yeah, so those things do help. But when you have diagnosed depression, that is a chemical imbalance in the brain. That is not something that can be cured by just journaling and exercising. Um, so, but I make it a point to, I was just, so I, I wrote a couple of notes and this is, this is, this is probably like an hour call and it, and we're now at, it is, and we're going to probably do a 20 minute lap. So let's just, let's see if we can wrap it up. <laughs> All right, so, but I, let me read you this list. And then you, and then if you can answer this question, cause I think yeah, what, that is huge. The list you already touched on. I had eight, eight things, fight negative thinking, right? That's the self-talk change the words you use. So the, so that you're not, yeah. you're not telling your brain or feeding your brain negativity. Transform your physiology. Get moving, which is exercising, eating right, adapting powerful rituals. You know, Tristan put something on. Maybe you wrote it. It was called like my evening uh, uh, ritual. Is what he used a different that word. That was Tristan's though. Yeah, his okay. evening ritual. Yeah. Build your support network and number eight set goals. So those are the eight things you already talked about. Like four or five of them. Oh, cool. You know, now, what's the what's the gap that you're really describing? So if someone's on this call and their goldfish died, as you said, and it's the reason why they didn't go to work today, that, right. that's that's clearly different than the chemical imbalance. So what kind of impact have you noticed by doing the eight things I just listed? Or maybe yeah. you're doing a few more. And then and then what's the difference? Or what's the gap? So, yeah, that's a great question. So like I was saying before, um, with depression and anxiety and being diagnosed with it, uh, it is still very important to do the, like to, it, if you recognize it, like I've recognized, like I know when I have dips in the day where I'm feeling low, I know that it's because of my depression, nothing went wrong. I can acknowledge it. Right. So mm. I know what I need to do to help me get out of that. Right. Me, I also realize, okay, you know, it's been a while since I like, I like to read, but I'm, I try to be as consistent as possible with reading. Sometimes I get caught up with other things, but I notice that if I haven't read for a few days, I need to do, you know, 20, 30 minutes of reading. If I haven't done the treadmill or if I haven't lifted weights for a few days, you know, I, I realize that that's something that could be, that could be causing this as well. Um, if I've eaten French fries and a cheeseburger instead of having grilled chicken. Yes. Those things are very important. Um, waking up at the same time every day. I feel it's very important to have a structure as much as you possibly can. I have little children at home, so sometimes that's difficult. Yeah. But it is important to just, just understand that there are certain things that you do need to accomplish every single day to keep your brain healthy. Um, so like, here's an example. So, um, uh, it, it, in the in the in lab code agents, a lot of people have been asking, you know, does anybody have a side hustle? This is just an example of thinking differently. Yeah, okay. and that irritates the crap out of me. Stop saying side hustle and say, does anyone have any other streams of income? Because side hustle is like uh, a hobby. Streams mm -hmm. of income is wealth. So that's an example of how you could flip your mindset. Start referring to things differently. And it will improve the way you think about life in general. That's important. Yeah. And and what? So are there any are there any things that anything that you can think of that you've come up with? So, so maybe I'm using a word ritual. Maybe you use something else. But when you have to when you have to do the things that you said are on your schedule and they're unavoidable. And you have kids. I have kids. That they yeah. don't they don't care. So if you no. don't, if you don't feel like doing something because you're depressed or you are you didn't get the right amount of sleep or whatever, or you lost, right. 
you know, you lost a big deal in business. How do how do you how do you retrick your brain to get back into action? It's really hard because I have an eight year old and a five year old. I know you have little kids too. Um, you know, when daddy's in a bad mood, um, you know, luckily my eight year luckily my eight year old son because he has Tourette and we share a lot of the same issues with you know, ADHD and anxiety. You know, he does understand, right? Because my wife has said, you know, you and daddy have similar things that you deal with. So he uh, does understand, which I'm actually very thankful for that we can relate uh, on that level together. But yeah, it's hard, man. Like most kids don't understand it. Most kids don't, they don't know why, you know, um, something bad happens. Um, but I feel like I've just been educating my children on, you know, they're, they're very, they're very aware of coronavirus. They're very aware. Like my son says, daddy, we can't go to target today. Can we? because of coronavirus, my five-year-old, cause he loves target. Yes. No, we can't, we can't go to target today, Gus. But like, I think it's really important to, um, you know, explain to your kids, uh, what happens to you during the day? Like what you go through, like why you might be in a bad mood, why something bad might've happened. Um, you know, I talk to my kids about, about money a lot, right? Like, because they, they, they think I could just buy them whatever they want. And so, mm -hmm. you know, if they want to play video games, uh, I say, listen, if you want to play video games, you got to read a book for 30 minutes. And I say, you know, daddy goes downstairs and he works. What is that? What happens when daddy works? Daddy gets money. Great. What happens when daddy gets money? He can buy me toys. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you want to play video games, what do you have to do? Read a book and then your payment is video games, whereas mine is money. So I, th it's very it, it, to, to, we, we, we can't dismiss, um, our children in terms of what they, what we think they understand and they don't understand. So they understand that daddy has something in his brain that makes him sad sometimes. And, uh, my wife is extremely supportive of that. And sometimes I just go upstairs and I go into my room, I lay down for 15 minutes, I do some breathing and then I come downstairs and I'm fine. And, um, I think if you're just very open and honest, especially now with your children, with what's going on, you know, they're going to understand and they're going to get it or they're maybe not understand completely, but they'll, they'll get it. Right. Daddy doesn't feel yeah, good. Right. Now. A good point yeah. not to underestimate the children and what they can understand and what they can't, because I got to tell you, I've been blown away by the, by the ability of, uh, of, for them to understand. And at a very early age, by the way, mine are 10 and 12 now, but I'm thinking back at like four, five, yeah. maybe, you know, it's like, it's like, wow, I, I thought I just learned that and I'm 48 and they're like, duh. Dude, what I know I'm 41. Kids now are like, I think so much, they're more exposed now than ever before to things that we didn't have when we grew up, right? Like the internet was invented when right. I was 15. Well, <laughs> if, you ever, if you have friends over or you're somewhere and you're talking and then all of a sudden your 10 year old has to correct you because he's been on YouTube all day and he knows more about the facts than you do. I love that. Right. I'm like, wow. Yeah. And so, I, I'll never win those debates. He'll crush me. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's an interesting time for, for sure. And I just think that whether you're clinically depressed or you're just depressed and sad because of this whole nonsense that's going on, um, just doing things to, 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 refocus your brain, read pot. Don't look at your phone first thing in the morning. You know, don't watch the news first thing in the morning. Don't go on the internet first thing in the morning. You know, the morning sets your brain up for how the rest of your day is going to go. And so if you read some crappy negativity in the morning, that's just going to set the tone for your day. Right? So it's, I make it a very, I make it a point to read something positive when I get out of bed because that will be the first thing that my brain um, kind of uh, registers as opposed to reading some, you know, crap that's been going on, you know, mm -hmm. in the news and pisses me off and just sets the tone. So I think that's really important. Those, are, those are great points. There's two other quick things. One was something that I, I, I heard today on, on someone's video who's very smart that I respect. And, and they said, um, it was, it, it if you if you set a goal and you go out and you crush it and you hit the goal, the tendency then is to bump up that goal and then keep going, right? So not not really not really um, 
thinking about, wow, I just crushed it. That's a good, let's, let's, let's sit here for a minute and think about how amazing we are. And, and, and they said that if you, if you change that thought, that process to setting a goal, hitting the goal, and then looking back and remember where you were and where you are now and bring it into the present as opposed to the future, that can help a little bit in terms of feeling contentment, uh, feeling like uh, it was, it was his definition of success rather than success always being in the future because you raised the goal don't forget about where you came from and appreciate where you are now. And, and I think, I think that was a, a good thing for me to hear. Um, and the other one you made me think about just a few minutes ago, which is, Oh yeah. If something, something happened or, or a life situation occurred or you didn't follow through with something, you feel like you dropped the balls. Don't beat yourself up about it because mm. I, I think that can be something that's tough and, and it, it paralyzes people. So your thoughts on either of those two things before we wrap up? Yeah, I think that, um, yeah, I, I, that makes me think of how so much for so much we think about things that like we don't have and we don't think about things that we do have. You know, like I read a stat recently from, I want to say it was like WebMD or something. Like 80% of the thoughts that go through our head every day are negative. And so, Oh yeah. Think, it's 50,000 yeah. thoughts a day, 80% yeah. are negative. So 40,000 are negative. Yeah. That's the, the that's same the, stat that I read crazy. recently. It's crazy. And so I, I think, you know, we're constantly thinking about the things that we don't have, right. Instead of thinking of thing, about thinking of the things that we do, like, you know, the things that I have, I have two awesome kids. I have a beautiful, hot, sexy wife and smart. Okay. She's smart too. Don't worry. She's very Don't smart. Worry. Like her. She's smart. Okay. Smarter than me. You know, um, I have a, a, a nice house. I have, uh, I have, a, I have two cars. I live um, in, in a nice town. Those are the things that I have. And like, people ask me, you know, what else do you want? I'm like, I don't really Anything else I get is kind of, I guess, like just icing on the cake. Really, I can't really think of it. I can't really think of anything else I would need. Right? I always really um, fill my day with the ideas that I see other people doing. So, like in your space, clearly it takes you a couple of minutes. You look online, you're like, "Oh my god, so and so just did that. That's really cool." But I bet we could do it a little bit better. And I got this upcoming podcast going on, or we have this event going on. I'm gonna make yeah. it tweaks. Like I think that's kind of cool. I guess where people could run into trouble is, is, and because we started by talking about the pandemic and the current state of things, if if someone's life is now less active and they have more alone time in their own head and they're sitting yeah. there thinking and 40,000 of, of the 50,000 thoughts a day are, or 80% are negative, that can be a challenge. So I love the advice you gave where it's like, the last thing you need to do is watch the news. At that no, point. Exactly. You know, the thing is, you know, if we're all in a different, we're all in a different place. Like while I have a 3000 square foot house, someone might be living in a 300 square foot apartment. And so we have, and everything is all relative. Like, I don't feel like I'm quarantined because I have space. Right. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, but someone who, who lives in a city in a shoebox, I mean, that's a completely different place to be. Um, and, and I don't know what that feels like to right now. Right. And so I can't, sympathize. I can definitely empathize. And I think that's why, you know, we have to, people are not themselves right now because the world isn't, isn't itself right now. So like, you know, I think we just have to just really, and that's why mental health is so important right now. We just have to really take that into account. People are saying things and doing things that they wouldn't normally say and do because they're acting out and they're, re they're reacting to what's going on. And so sometimes we just need to take a step back and just and, and acknowledge that and, um, you know, uh, just kind of try as much as we can, uh, you know, to refocus, um, you know, just our day to day and, and, and take in as much and reduce the amount of negative crap that, that comes across your, your face every day and, and just really, uh, you know, try to focus on what you do have. If you're not sick, you know, if your business is good if you have family who's healthy, you know, all that other negative stuff, your 300 square foot apartment may not be as bad. I mean, I don't know. I don't live in one, so I don't want to say, 
that it won't be as bad, but we just all need to take a step back and, and realize like everybody's in a different place and everyone's for the first time ever. Everyone has one thing in common. That's right. Pandemic. So well, I always thought we had another thing in common before this and that, that we are all human. And that's why I that's love true. you. Loved what you guys built or have built and continue to build in lab code. It's a community of humans. Everything I've done in the brokerage space is a community of humans. You, you brought up some great points from, from a leadership perspective and self-leadership, which is reactive behavior. Once you realize that that reactive behavior really ultimately at the end of the day hurts yourself worse than whoever you were reactive to, you just, ha you just have a little different thought process about it, which gives you choice to press pause a little bit there. And so um, awareness is key. And that's what you that's what you did with that statement. I hope that you created a lot of Thank awareness you, for other people. Appreciate that. We did a 25 minute lab. So <laughs> well, you're great to talk to. So, <laughs> thanks, so man. You I really appreciate the opportunity. It's great catching up with you. And thanks for sharing. Um, I'll see you soon. Awesome, man. We'll see you soon. Have a great one. Thanks everybody for watching. Take care.